I remember buying my Galaxy Note 3 as if it was yesterday. I wanted the device to be big enough and convenient enough for working on the road. At the time Note 3 was called a phablet, like a phone and a tablet mix and seemed like an ideal fit for me. From then on phones started growing and now phablets are the norm. Luckily this word didn't catch on as it sounds stupid. Back in the day Note 3 was super expensive for a kid still in school. But looking back, it was worth every penny as I used the phone for 8 years. Yes sir, I had this phone for 8 years and the only reason why I bought a new one was because the battery only lasted half a day. I changed 3 of them, one even got swollen, I'll talk about that in another video of mine, but still no matter how many batteries I changed, the charge didn't last. I speculate that modern apps are just too resource demanding these days for my old e-phone. So what phone did I get? Well, I had several phones in mind, the first one was the newest Galaxy Note 20. A beautiful phone, but I dismissed it as too expensive. I then started looking at Xiaomi phones. I read about them that they have extremely good hardware for a very cheap price. And that's true, but they lack at the software level. Still, for a long time I was browsing through their listings. You can get a decent phone for just 200 bucks, but I didn't go the cheapest route either. I bought myself a Galaxy Note 10 Lite. Due to the recent launch of Note 20, it was heavily discounted and I got it for 450 euros, which is a bit more than 500 USD. I was tempted to go for Note 20 and do a review and comparison video with Note 3. But just by doing my research and comparing Note 10 and Note 20, I didn't find a good reason to go for the Note 20. 8K video recording? Nah, would also need to get a new PC to be able to edit that. Premium photos? I'm not an Instagram celebrity. Also, I don't think that this time I will be using my new phone for 8 years. So I didn't want to overspend. 5G is coming to town and not sure when, but I will want to jump on board. Note 20 Ultra has 5G support, but it's even more expensive, with even fewer differences between the regular and the Ultra version. So, in this video I want to do a comparison between Note 3 and Note 10 Lite and also take a broader look at how smartphones changed in almost a decade of progress, or should we call it stagnation. Let's bring out the specs. Note 10 display, 6.7 inches, Note 3, 5.7 inches. The Note 10 is a bit longer and the weight is more at the top, so it has that feeling that it wants to swing up, while Note 3 in comparison looks a bit too wide and kind of fat, but the weight feels distributed more evenly. In general, phones became more round, bezels became ultra thin, buttons on the screen disappeared completely, incremental changes, but nothing too groundbreaking. Moving on. Note 10 processor, 2.7 GHz octa-core. Note 3, 1.9 GHz octa-core. Within 8 years, processors definitely have gotten better, that's for sure, but not that much better. My Note 3 still managed to run pretty fast. There is definitely a noticeable difference between the two. Everything is much faster and snappier on Note 10. Apps load faster and on my Note 3, I started having different hiccups and crashes. Though most of them likely come due to the incompatibilities with the old operating system. Note 10 front camera, 32 megapixels. Note 3, 2 megapixels. Note 3 had a terrible front camera, barely usable, but the Note 10 has a pretty good camera. In general, I guess the biggest innovation with front cameras is a popping out camera, which is another thing I hope doesn't catch on, it just feels like poor design. Other than that, front cameras just got more megapixels. Note 10, rear camera, 3 12 megapixel cameras. Note 3, 1 13 megapixel camera. I remember when I just got my Note 3. The back camera was amazing. Compared to my old phone, 
and to all the other phones that my friends bought for two to three years in the future. Nowadays, it's pretty bad. No 10, much better. I think cameras are one of the main parts that significantly improved in smartphones. Multiple cameras with different lenses can do some amazing high resolution pictures. You can even do photos during the night and the overall photo quality has tremendously improved. Note 10, RAM, 8GB. Note 3, 3GB. More RAM is better, not much to say here. Note 10, storage, 128GB. Note 3, 32GB. The basic storage hasn't grown much. Barely enough to keep up with the demand from bigger apps, bigger photos, etc. Dropbox must be happy. Note 10, battery capacity, 4500 mAh. Note 3, 3200 mAh. As I already mentioned, the main reason I bought a new phone. Note 10 lasts me up to 3 days with average usage. I will see how it will age, but for now I'm definitely satisfied. In general though, batteries haven't improved much, only incrementally. It's pretty common to carry around a power bank. Though, now as the whole car industry is going electric and a lot of money is being thrown at it, I'm really hoping for some breakthrough innovation in battery tech. Maybe Tesla will make it happen. Note 10, operating system Android 10. Note 3, Android 4.3. Most of the technological progress was made at the software level. Note 3 came with Android 4 and got updated up to 5, which broke a few minor things on the phone. It's hard to compare the versions of what changed throughout the years, but the privacy and security features are definitely at the top. Notifications are less annoying, a lot of layout changes have happened, dark mode got introduced, gesture navigation, etc. Switching all my Note 3 data to Note 10 was a breeze. One simple app copy-pasted everything automatically in like 5 hours. I was really impressed. One of the most exciting things for me why I wanted a new generation phone was the fingerprint scanner. On Note 3 I didn't have any locks as it was too troublesome. I thought a fingerprint scan would be the ideal way for security and user experience. But nah. I'm not really happy with it. It sometimes takes me up to 4 times until I unlock my phone. It's reliable for sure, but sometimes a bit clunky when you want to open it up quickly. Ok, then there's also the face scanner. Doesn't work when you're out with a mask and doesn't work in the dark, which is almost 24-7 here in Lithuania during the winter. And you also need to point the camera at yourself. Well, obviously, but ain't too convenient. And there's also a smart unlocker that detects if you have been holding the phone the entire time or was it laying around idly. Basically, it assumes that if you were holding it, it doesn't need to lock itself. A very convenient feature, but works far fewer times than I would like to. So, I'm using the combination of these three and I still find it a bit annoying. I might change it to a four number pin or nothing at all. The audio was another big reason why I needed a new phone. My old videos had audio recorded in my old Note 3 and up until now I was recording with it. The new Note 10 definitely has better audio, picks up less background noise and I don't need to edit as much. Here's a quick comparison of the two. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Video and photos are definitely better on Note 10. This is one major part that was significantly improving throughout the years for smartphones. Better cameras, more cameras, better lenses, AI enhancement, etc. What Note phones also have is a pen. I guess the original idea was because the screen is so big you need a tool to navigate faster. But as phones got bigger, we realized, nah, we're good. Honestly, I never used the pen on Note 3, just couldn't really figure it out. It's good for drawing, which I love, but other than that, not too much. Maybe I'll figure out some cool stuff on Note 10, though I doubt it. Even the Z Fold doesn't have a pen with an insanely big screen. Other than that, what else got improved throughout the years? Well, we are almost there with 5G technology. 
We got better, faster processors, more RAM, etc. But we don't utilize much of it. Well, with 5G and the amount of data that will come through, all that hardware will come to use. What else? Well, Samsung tried building a folding phone. The first one seemed like a huge fiasco, but at least there was something to talk about. A few more generations and maybe those phones won't suck anymore and all of us will use a folding phone. What else has changed? Well, chargers and headphones became wireless. I still don't get used to how the AirPods look though. Seems a bit silly, but not having the wires is definitely a good idea, as they used to break or get entangled. I guess this is it. Eight years have passed and there is not much to talk about. The technology progress is slowing down and getting a new phone is less exciting. Though, maybe that's just me. What makes you excited about smartphone technologies? What was the main reason why you bought your newest phone? Let me know in the comments below.